And he said, everybody who has it, a lot of my friends have had it, must do this because despite what China says, this is saving lives. You're right on the front lines. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it seems like there's some great anecdotal data suggesting that it works. And uh, our first experience with it uh, was during the Ebola outbreak in West Africa in 2015. We were partnered with the Gates Foundation trying to make homeless plasma available then. So we were ready once this uh, pandemic happened. And our first experience here was in Europe, actually, in northern Italy with our partner Kedrion and also in Spain and, and Switzerland as well. And we really were able to, to work with our blood center customers and hospitals and stand up those convalescent plasma programs to be able to provide it to patients. Now, it, as you said, though, it is anecdotal. When will we get some very serious uh, studies in this? China stopped its, its, its study early, but I'm, frankly, I'm biased. I don't trust the Chinese. They have stopped trials before, even though they ended up might have been good. Will we have anything definitive about what uh, convalescent plasma does uh, soon from any major journal that we can study? Well, I think there's a, a number of uh, randomized controlled clinical studies that are underway both in Europe and the U.S., and uh, they should be reporting in the next you know, weeks and months. So I think that's really promising. Uh, Cirrus has now deployed the, our technology at, I think, like 65 sites across Europe, Middle East, Africa, South America, and the U.S. So there are a lot of activities underway, and it really is amazing what's, what's happening. Uh, the, it's my firm belief that the blood centers are sort of the unsung heroes of uh, this pandemic and that they're you know, moving heaven and earth to try and make this convalescent plasma available to patients, uh, really sick patients. It's really been quite remarkable. Now, I don't want to uh, by any means say this is your only business. As a matter of fact, in the Q&A section recently uh, of a transcript I was reading, uh, a very smart analyst is saying, you know what, this is actually delayed some of the other things that you can do because people don't uh, voluntarily give the blood that you would otherwise need. So where's the rest of your business? How's it doing? It's doing really well. I mean, the COVID-19 impact has had uh, somewhat of a, a slowdown in clinical trials, but you know, the overall business, and we've really weathered uh, the storm so far, and, and the, the business is resilient, and the team has been resilient. Uh, the studies that you're referring to for our red cell clinical studies are uh, now enrolling again. Uh, most of the sites that paused during the height of the, the pandemic over the last couple of months have started enrolling patients again. So it's really great to see that, uh, those, those phase three studies for our red cell program. All right, so when people give blood, I mean, I think they just give blood, they get the donut and they leave. But there's a lot more to it, right? Once that blood is taken, it's not just uh, put into some big tank. There's work that Cirrus does with it. Yeah, well, it's, we work primarily with our blood center partners, and, and there's a whole processing scheme for how they collect and distribute blood across the U.S. Uh, and I think, you know, fundamentally, you know, it all starts with the donors, and I just want to put a little plug for the blood centers right now. Uh, this Sunday is World Blood Donor Day, and, and they're really, you know, in a critical situation right now because typically the inventory of blood at even one time is like, you know, three to five days. I think that's been cut in half during the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, but but anyway, uh, you know, uh, the, the blood supply is, is still available and, and being maintained by uh, blood centers throughout the U.S. and through the world for that matter. Okay, so uh, where what are you doing uh, with the funding from DARDA? Yeah, so uh, the DARPA funding I think you're referring to is, is partnered with uh, one of our collaborators in this convalescent plasma consortium. We would actually work more closely with U.S. BARDA, which is the Biomedical okay. Advanced Research and Development Agency. And uh, back in uh, 2017, during the previous epidemic, which was uh, the Zika epidemic, you probably remember, uh, U.S. BARDA came to us and said, you know, we, we see that your products are approved for plants and plasma. That's great because it safeguards the blood supply. We really like to have that available in the United States for red cells. Can we help you do that? And so they uh, provided us with a contract of about $214 million to accelerate that program through FDA approval. That, that's what funds our phase three clinical trials and our commercial manufacturing scale up. Okay, one last question. I know that you're starting to see some good growth. You are targeting 20 to 25% uh, revenue growth in 2020. Will you be able to make that despite the problems or, or because of, co of COVID-19? Well, I think it's just uh, the resilience of our business. We're one of the few med tech companies that hasn't had to pull guidance. So uh, we reaffirmed that guidance on our most recent quarterly call. And 
expect to see robust growth coming out of the United States as well as from Europe. Oh, excellent. Okay, well, it's a uh, speculative stock, but you're doing a lot of good things. And I know from people who are doing convalescent plasma, you are crucial in the process. Thank you, OB Greenman, for coming on Mad Money. Thanks a lot, Jim. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. That's Obi Greenman, President and CEO of Sears Corporation, C-E-R-S. Do your homework, but I think that they have uh, this convalescent plasma, I think, is going to be very, very important important in the coming months of this disease. They have money's back here for the break.